Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to this old barn shop. Today's kind of a a request video of mine to uh, see if, if some of the electrical gurus out there can help me maybe figure this out. So what I've done is I've gotten the hoist back down that I uh, need to work on. So that's how it moves. But anyway, this is the disaster of uh, electric setup that I was going to take off and maybe put back as the original uh, with the mechanical. But <coughs> in order to do that, I'd have to cut some new gears to go here and here and find the chain hand wheels that go with those pockets down there. And it's going to be a pretty good bit of work to get that done. And then still you've got to pull all that hand chain to move this thing. Uh, it doesn't take much effort, but it's a lot of feet of chain to pull to lift this up and down. So, and the other thing is, is when I built the building, I don't have a lot of extra clearance over top of this. I just kind of designed it uh, to clear the top of this motor. So I don't have a lot of extra room to put a big hand wheel and gears and stuff up here. So I thought about it and said, well, maybe I'll see about uh, getting this electric going again. Might buy a new motor for it, but it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, of course, it's got a magnetic brake assembly here that breaks the motor shaft. And then we got a worm gear, which worm gears don't back feed very easy, so it doesn't take a lot to break this thing to hold the load. And over in this box is our controls. Uh, that's what I'm not exactly sure about. Of course, there's no wiring diagram or anything. It appears to me, I'm going to guess, that they've got 240 volt power coming in here. They've got it coming to this contact. And then it's jumpered off to also feed this contact. So both of these are energized uh, from the same end feed power all the time, which I don't see. There's no interlock uh, to keep you from energizing both at the same time, but maybe that's in the pendant, which we had no pendant. We just got four wires in there. And coming back out of those four wires, we've got two. One goes to each of these contacts. And then we've got another one is wired into this transformer. And the transformer also comes out to here and here. Uh, that's on the that's a contact there it looks like, I guess this this transformer um, not sure if that if that could be wired to only power up when uh, a contact is closed I don't really see how that would work cause it looks like I'm gonna say these are the power in feeds uh, and they're hooked into the same two wires that come in. They may even have 120 going to this instead of 240. Uh, the motor can be either one according to the plate on it, which I can't really read. Uh, it's a Dayton model something 6K702J. Looks like horsepower 0.5. RPM, I think it says 1725. Uh, this is 115,230. Uh, can't really make out much else of it. It's got the two different wirings over here. 
for the different voltages and I can't really read them. Uh, it's a capacitor start motor. Capacitor's missing. It's been knocked off. And we've got the brake wired in to the motor feeds so when the motor energizes the brake unlocks automatically and as soon as the motor de-energizes the brake comes back on so i got that figured out and it's like it's like we've got two Two wires tied together going to the motor feed that would be hot all the time. And then the rest of the wires come to the contacts over here. Yep, we got one there. And it's jumpered, so it's energized if either contact's closed. Looks like the other three are on this post, this post, and this post. This looks like all the motor feeds are off of this one and then we've got jumpers so I guess maybe that's how it interlocks is it feeds the open side of this when this one's closed When this one's closed, I still don't, I still don't see any real safety interlock to keep you from energizing both posts at the same time. I'm not sure how they do that, or if it's even done. Maybe you just have to be smart enough not to hit both buttons at the same time, or maybe they had a toggle rocker on it to where you could only do one at a time. So that's kind of my question for any of you guys that are electrical gurus that see this kind of stuff pretty often. I'm more of a mechanic electrician, so these contacts and transformers are not something I run into in my day-to-day -day work, so I'm not super up on on uh, the wiring of them. Uh, so definitely, there's a lot of a lot of jumpering going on here that uh, makes the the wires redundant from circuit to circuit. I guess all you gotta do is flip one of the feeds for the motor to make it run the opposite direction. So I guess over here there's one one of these posts is switched. Uh, let's see that one's top. Uh, yeah, that one there is switched with that one. These center two are switched between these two posts in order to make it run the two different directions. So that's what we've got going on. See if we can get this part here working, and then if I can guess if I can get that done, then I'll put this hoist back up and get it out of the way. So I can be working on pouring concrete pretty soon. Get that done. For now, I've been working on uh, getting all my cables put in. Getting my cables put in and getting the posts all pulled up square so that I got the roof sitting in the right place so I can go ahead and start framing that wall up over there start getting some of that stuff cleaned it cleaned up in here uh, start using some of this lumber I've took back down put back up get those walls up get the rest of these boards took off and cleaned up So 
so then I can start getting in here and pouring some concrete in the next month or so. Now that the weather's starting to get a little better, it's been pretty poor here the last couple of weeks. I haven't been able to get a lot done out here. A lot of rain and snow and ice and high winds and hasn't been good weather to work out here. So uh, we had a couple of nice days this weekend and I think we're supposed to get snow again tomorrow. So we get done what I can today. And if anybody's got any insight on this wire and on this motor can point me to a diagram or something of how that's usually done, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching.